what were you, what what do you feel like happened to the team after that play? Uh, pretty simple. We're supposed to, that's a punt where we're supposed to kick the ball to the right sideline, and the ball went to the left sideline. Is there a is there a, are there words for for this for this loss given the way you guys played in the second half up until that play? Uh, we had a spirited talk in the locker room. Uh, I told the guys I don't want them hanging their head. We got a really good football team. Um, Uh, little things need to change. And I, I kind of said it at halftime to the guys. Um, I, I felt like I was watching the same movie again, and I told them they got to change the record. We can't have four false starts with the offensive linemen. Um, Coach Austin stands behind those guys every day at practice and yells, move, and gets the D-line to shift. And uh, everything we know how to do to keep them from doing it, they got to stay calm and do their job and not jump offside. Probably cost us points in the first half. Um, we got to punt the ball. We have guys at the university s specifically for the reason to punt it, and and we have a couple ten yard punts that almost cost us. And right when we need it the most, we kick it to the wrong side of the field, and uh, some of the coverage guys didn't see it, and it cost us game. Um, I'm tired of it. A lot of the guys that are we have a ton of guys that battled their butt off out there today. Uh, I told them I don't want anybody hanging their head. We got a really good football team, but this team has to change the record. I can't go out there and stay set for them. I, I can keep trying to fix it. Um, these guys got to do it, and we got a good enough football team to do that. Uh, but they got to get sick of this stuff. I'm sick of it. They're sick of it. Uh, we got to be able to count on guys when we need them to do their job. Scott, in the in the second half there, specifically the drive where you, you went ahead midway through the fourth quarter, I mean, how, how well did your defense play just over the course of the second half? And then did you feel like you were in control of the game as you started to, to lean on them a little bit in the fourth quarter? Yeah, a uh, um, couple, couple plays hurt us. Uh, you know, when we went down and scored, I was really proud of the way the guys executed that drive. Uh, and we got to finish a drive that just start the third quarter. Touchdown would have been nice. Um, they got a good defense. I, I give that team a lot of credit. But when we went down and scored and got a stop, uh, you know, a couple first downs ended. And, um, you know, right when we need it, as often as we practice our option stuff, a ball's on the ground, and it can't happen. Um, and then the punt happens, and that can't happen. And, um, you know, these guys, these guys got to get sick of it enough to do stuff just perfect all the time. And, and understand that when you need it the most, you fall back on your training. You don't rise to the occasion, you fall back on your training. And um, I, I feel terrible for them because the defense uh, is playing really well right now. And um, we didn't have any business losing that game. I, I know not, not everything's on Adrian, but did you think from your vantage point, did you have a chance at a, at a, a touchdown or, or a chunk play on the first play of overtime? Yeah, we got exactly what we wanted. We'd rehearsed that play. Um, I think we had Levi running wide open up the seam. I think Omar had a chance in the back of the end zone. Um, we didn't throw it. Hey, Scott, on the on the play they picked, um, anything differently that could have been done there, or, or what? Just go, take me through that play, I guess. No, you know we uh, we wanted to be aggressive in overtime, and I think we had the right play called on first down. Um, we didn't execute it. Um, Second down, it's unfortunate, but you know if that ball's a little higher, I think he catches and gets the first down and has to go down and catch it, and it's third and four. And play we've rehearsed a dozen times for third and four. Um, I don't know. I kind of thought he might have the inside slant to throw. Anytime you're on a slant, you got to cross the DB's face. And um, you know we had that play prepped just for that situation. We, again, we didn't execute at the right time, but it shouldn't have come down to that. Hey Scott, what can you do midstream with special teams in the middle of a season when you don't necessarily trust your your punters at this point, I guess? Or it, how can you fix it in the middle of the year, I guess? The, uh, the team's going to be on guys to get stuff done. It wasn't just the punters. Uh, we got to catch punts. We probably gave up 300 yards of hidden yardage, or 200 to 300 yards of hidden yardage in special teams. Uh, we didn't cover kicks well. Um, the punt was huge, and letting balls roll out on their punts is huge. That, that's all yards you, you can't get back. And um, you know, Coach Dawson's doing as good a job as he knows how to do, and as good a job as I know how to tell him to do. Uh, we got to do better, and at some point, we got to be able to trust guys to do the, the things that they were brought here to do. 
Scott, at the end of um, regulation, did you guys consider to try to use those timeouts and, and try to win the game? I mean, what, what was your thought process in that last minute when you had one more shot with timeouts? I wanted to go score until we took the sack. And then um, once we took the sack, I think there was 18 seconds left or something when I looked up in the clock. And uh, at that point, I think more bad things can happen than good. Hey, Scott, what level right now are you seeing from these guys? You say you, you need them to be sick of it. Um, how, how many guys in that locker room are, are sick of the kind of stuff that you've seen repeatedly? Uh, all of them. Um, you know, it, these guys have done so much work to improve and get better. And, you know, th this hasn't been easy. It hasn't been easy for this team. It hasn't been easy for me. Um, but from where we started to where we are right now, we're, we're a way better team. Um, you know, we got to get the pilot light lit and and get over the hump in a couple of these games and get on a roll. And and that just hasn't happened. It hadn't happened because um, right when we need things to happen, people let us down. Um, and and I got to do a better job. But it, it it's the same thing again. I I mean, we got to be tough enough that when you get a sack, to stop on the whistle and not throw a guy down. And we had it happen in the Illinois game, and we showed the team and we talked about it. But it's not just physical toughness. It's mental toughness to stay set in your stance, to let the quarterback go, to punt the ball where you're supposed to, to do all those little things right. And a veteran team does those things. A young team doesn't. And that's been part of the reason we haven't done it. But uh, there's a lot of kids sick to their stomach in that locker room because they do do things right. And the ones that aren't need to hear it from the ones that aren't. Hey, Michigan State didn't have a first down offensively uh, in the second half at all. Um, have you been around a, a defensive performance like that? Uh, no, but probably not. I expect to see a lot more from those guys. We're playing at a high level on defense, and, and that's why it's so mystifying that we punt the ball 40 yards off target. Um, you know, we should have gotten a first down and kept the clock going and, and field position would have been better. You go back before that and we let a punt roll out to the 20 instead of fielding it on the 35. And the field position is different, too. And, and those things matter. Um, I don't think Coach Dawson can try to detail stuff much better in practice, but we're going to try because uh, it's got to be better. Um, get a first down and keep it going. but. You know, we have a punt call where you're supposed to roll right, punt right, and I'd rather see the ball land 30 yards out of bounds than, than miss your target by, by 30 yards. And uh, we got to be able to count on guys to do their job. Did you have the ask available in the, in the second half? No, Xavier was not available in the second half. Adrian's a really good player, and, and he's, he's had ups and downs at Nebraska, too, and he's gotten all sorts of praise and all sorts of criticism. Uh, he's one of the best players that I've been around, and I think one of the best players in the country, and, and we rely on him. Um, he, he did enough to, tonight for us to win. A lot of guys did enough tonight for us to win. It's, uh, it's a crying shame. Where did Adrian hurt? Uh, yeah, he's hurt. Um, we called a play that I think we probably shouldn't have on a third and long, uh, asking him to run the ball. Um, yeah, that goes back to we got to be ready to play. We can't give up a sack on the first play of the game in .5 seconds. Uh, that put us in a bad situation. We called the quarterback draw. He got hit. Um, went in for x-rays and everything was good. And he came back in and played his butt off.
Hey, Ramir. Um, How did you feel like your offensive line played as the game progressed? It seemed like early there were some struggles, but it, it felt like there were some holes as the game wore on. Uh, I thought they did a good, I did a good job. Uh, they stick to their rules. Uh, made some good openings for uh, me, me and the running backs. So I thought they played a good game overall. At Ramirez at the end when when they returned the punt for the touchdown and then went in overtime. I mean, how, how difficult is that to accept after you guys dominate offensively and defensively for the whole second half? I mean, we had the momentum. We just can't give it away like that. You know, we had we had them and we just. You know, we just gave it away. We just got to play better, play smarter, get these Ws. Frost said he, he told you guys you need to keep your head up. Uh, at 0-2 at in the Big Ten, how do you go about that? And you, Do you worry at all about guys sticking with the program here going forward? You just got to flush it and come back, you know, next week and get it done. That's what we can do. Can't, can't hang your heads. You got to come back next week and get the W. I mean, overall, he just said we got to play smarter. You know what I'm saying? We had the momentum. We just can't lose it like that. We just got to play smarter, and it starts at practice. So we got to play smarter in practice to be able to play smarter in the games. That's all it is, to be honest with you. Did, did you see w- what happened to Adrian there on the first drive? And, and what does it say about him then to go back in the locker room and, and get x-rays and then come back out and play the way he did the rest yeah, of the way? Yeah, I'm not sure what happened, but I'm sure I know he got hurt. And then he's a tough kid, like, you know, you know you know his role for the team. You know we need him. And he came back out here and play. That's a that's a baller right there. He's a dog, and, so, and that's what we need on our team. Ramir, what I mean, what are you thinking when they return that punt? The way you guys had sort of controlled that whole second half. And it was just like, it's crazy. You know, what I'm saying we had the momentum. Like I said, we had the momentum. We just gave it away just like that, like in a snap of the finger. So it was just. I don't know. How, how do guys keep their heads up? You know, you've had two games like this where you're right there, right there. I mean, how do you change the course, I guess? I mean, it starts at practice. You just got to play smarter at practice, uh, you know, work harder at practice, and do the little things right to help us get these wins and these close games like this. You know, so it starts at practice. That's all it is. Hey, Ramir. You guys had opportunities at the end of both halves, and then obviously in overtime too, to to, to score in that kind of a situation um, when the, when the clock was was against you. What what was the mindset of the offense in those moments um, when things went wrong, specifically there at the end of the two halves and in overtime? Uh, we're trying to attack. We're trying to you know trying to score. We're trying to do everything we can. We got to play smarter. So the mindset was just like you know go down there, make sure we got the ball. No turnovers, you know, no mistakes. Just anything, we can, anything we can do just to score. So that was just like the main mindset overall. Okay.
Adrian, you've had some uh, tough losses, hard losses to swallow in your time here. Um, where does this one fit in that picture, and, and how frustrating is it just with the way that you, you dominated in the second half? Yeah, I'd say uh, at the top for me right now, that's how it feels. I'll leave it at that. Well, I mean, Scott came in here and talked about wanting you guys to not hang your heads. He said you have a really good football team. I'm, I'm imagining that's tough in the moment, but how, how do you go forward with giving, you know, giving away a game late like that and, and trying to keep the guys together and, and move forward now at 0-2 in the Big Ten? Yeah, well, I think you said it, the type of team we have right now and knowing that this is a good football team and we're close. Uh, that's part of what makes it hurt really bad that we lose a game like this, but also uh, gives us optimism going forward. What do you guys say uh, to your teammates? I mean, if there's one thing that's very hard to control. It's, it's the way a ball goes off a punter or a kicker's foot. It's just hard for anyone else on the team to control. So when that happens, what do you, what do you tell a team after a game since that's part of why what happened happened? Yeah, I, th I think that's just that's football. I mean, some guy, um, I mean, play went Michigan State's way. I mean, it's, it's adversity. It's, we face adversity every week, whether it's small or big. Um, we just got to respond. I mean, that's football. Uh, Adrian, what did you see on the two overtime plays? The, the first one where you had the concept working down the field and then the third down ball that got intercepted. Yeah. Um, so the first play you're asking about yeah. and then the, the last play yep. that was intercepted. Uh, first play, it was kind of a play action type play. And um, looking down the seam, I'm going to have to look back on film and see if what I was seeing was correct because I checked it down. I didn't think I had anything. Uh, and then the third play, it was man. I uh, went to go throw my outside slant, and I got to throw a better ball. When you, when you went down in the first quarter, did you, were you immediately thinking about trying to get back in the game, or were you worried at that point that you were not going to be able to, to make it back? Um, I knew it was a, just a matter of time before I was back on the field. Finally, got over this hump. I mean, did you feel that at that at that, at that point? Yeah. Well, you know, the game is it's four minutes away, right? Um, none of us thought it was over, and you got to keep playing. Uh, there was none of that on the sideline, even after we scored that touchdown with seven minutes and twenty seconds left. Um, there's time left. There's anything can happen. We got to finish this off. More first downs and. Uh, we didn't get it done. So, yeah, there was a big play there, a big special teams play, but there are countless plays that uh, we could have back that would have changed the outcome. What do you guys have to say about your defense, just the way they played in the second half? I mean, Michigan State didn't have a first down um, the entire second half. Out outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. I mean, they've been uh, lights out last week and this week. Uh, they're a really talented group, and the rest of our team needs to step up. They know the role. Um, they play and they're, they keep getting better and they're the backbone of this team. They're fueling us. So we're going to step it up for them. They're going to continue doing great stuff and tonight was just another one of those performances for them. Awesome. You've, you've been around a lot of different teams here. Do you think this one's got to sort of uh, make up to overcome something like this and, and, and get back on track here as the season goes on? Yeah, this is a, like you said, a special team for sure. Um, if I know anything about this team, we're not going to croak. We're going to we're going to keep kicking. We're going to keep fighting, and we're going to build off this game. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to learn out of it, and we're just going to use this as another another foundation we can we can jump off of. Um, we're going to watch this film, and we're going to be on to Northwestern. Hey, Austin, did this one feel different at all in the second half? The way you guys dominated, you know, with the exception of a few plays, did you feel like this was the the day you were going to get over the hump? Yeah, this, I mean, we played a good football. Um, game. I mean, they're a good football team. Um, there are some plays. I mean, there's a lot of plays I wish we could do a little differently, but that's football. They're going to win some plays. We're going to win. They're going to um, win some plays. So it's. Uh, I don't want to point it at, at one thing, but it, we just we got to execute better as a as a whole team, offense, defense, special teams. Um, I mean, there's the defense played a great game, but there's always stuff they can learn, and I'm I'm, I'm looking to build off this. For either or both of you guys as captains, what's your message on Monday morning? to this team? Uh, what I alluded to earlier, we know the type of team we are, and this isn't going to discourage us, just like the Illinois loss didn't discourage us. We know what we're capable of, and um, 
we need to stop shooting ourselves in the foot. Uh, simple as that. There's going to be more stuff to it, obviously, but that's for their ears and, and not yours. Yeah, it's uh, a lot of the guys are going to be looking to see how us leaders react to this game. Um, I mean, we're going to take it. It's a new game. This one's over. We're going to learn from it, and we're on a Northwestern. Um, we didn't lose any. We're not losing any momentum just because we stumbled a little bit right here. Uh, we're going to keep fighting. We're going to keep clawing. We're going to win as many games as possible. Got the mic. Is this on? Yeah, I've got the mic, so I'll go. Um, Garrett, uh, what do you think about the way that you guys played defense in the second half? Michigan State didn't get a first down after halftime until that Wildcat run at the start of OT. Yeah, that's pretty sweet. Uh, playing good defense, obviously, when they don't get a first down. So, uh, you know, we we uh, talk about in the half uh, at halftime in the locker room about uh, winning our drives uh, coming out in the first half and the second half. And then when uh, offense scores or gets points on the board, we the next big drive is stopping them and, and pinning them deep so we can get some more points on the board. So uh, we did that, did really well in the second half. JoJo, you feel like you guys could have done more after halftime? Yeah, get the ball out. Um, we had a good half, but it wasn't great by any means. And we got more to give. This whole team's got more to give. We're not done. We're not going to roll over. This hurts. We want to win the game. We're competitors. But ultimately, it's how we respond to these moments that are going to define us. Gary, you guys obviously knew the kind of challenge you had with uh, Walker and, and the way Michigan State had ran the ball. What allowed you to um, handle him and, and that element of their offense so well through, through all of regulation? Yeah, I mean, everybody was really concerned about his eight yards rushing or whatever. And you know, we knew who, what type of defense we were. I mean, let's get 11 hats to the ball. Like I said, it's hard to run the ball when you have 11 dudes trying to attack you. So um, we didn't change anything. We just played the defense that we know we can play, and we played with each other. Jojo, how, how does a back-to-back uh, -back weeks, and in particular this loss, test you as a, as a leader? Yeah. You, you want to win. That's why you put in all the work, you know, so you can reap the rewards of your work. Um, Ultimately, our identity is not in wins and losses. You know, this is Nebraska football. We take pride in that, and so we owe it to Nebraska football to respond from this, learn something from this, be better from this. Because what else can we do at this point? Gary, you guys were getting getting ready to go back on the field when the punt unit was out there with two minutes. I mean, what? I guess literally, where were you, and what did you see on the on the return? I was right where the the one where he ran it back. Yeah, uh, I was right by the return and just kicked it the wrong way. You know, can't kick it the wrong way. Uh, can yeah. you? Can you? I mean, there, there's no, there's not many teams out there that have a someone who's coaching the finer points of of kicking. Right, it's a pretty solitary job. And you talked about picking up Connor last week. I mean, how do you? How 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 do you handle that this week when you have such a sort of you know flagrant misplay on a, on a kick like that? Uh, you know. Like I said, I tried to I tried to pick up Culp um, and a team picked uh, picked him up, and obviously he kicked a lot better this game. You know, I, I don't know if he had any part in that at all. I would like to think we did. So um, you know, he's our he's our teammate. Um, you know, we all make mistakes. His his or his mistakes are so obvious because obviously he has one shot. You know, as a defense, we have sixty or something. You know, so um, he has to be perfect which is a difficult thing to do in football. But, uh, you know, can't just get on him and think that he sucks now. you got to pick him up like I did with Culp. And like I said, hopefully we, we had um, some positive mental space with Culp, and he did a lot better, and so we just do the same thing. Just generally, I, get, I know it's, this one's hard to talk about, guys, but JoJo, what did you see from guys in the locker room? I mean, just how do you think guys can respond to kind of two gut punches in a row? You know, it hurts. We want to win. 
It was kind of everything I already alluded to. Like, we're competitors. That's why you play the game, you know? But we kind of talked in the locker room, like, we're not quitting. Like, that's not in our DNA. That's not an option. So what can we do? We can respond with a positive attitude. You know, we, we, there is so many things we can take away from this game, good and bad. So we just have to do that. Hey, Garrett, I know, I know you, JoJo, has mentioned maybe getting a turnover or something in the second half, but to not give up a first down against a team like that, I mean, <laughs> despite the result, you've got to be kind of proud of that, I assume. Oh, yeah. No, no doubt. Uh, that's why I really I love – our defense. I love the black shirts because we're never. We don't look at that and go, oh, we, you know, we did it. We made it. We go. Why didn't we get the ball turned over? You know, why didn't we get a pick? Why didn't we do this? Uh, we don't. We think. We say, all right, cool. We got. We did that thing really well. Let's go do some other things really well and put it all together. So we don't get. Uh, we don't get competent. We don't get uh, complacent. Sorry. Yeah, that's what we're supposed to do. You know, shut them out. That's what we're supposed to do.